Don't look, don't look. Spoiler alert. You're gonna see what I'm gonna to make today. Oh, oh darn, you looked, you looked. Hello, Internet, I'm Guy. Uh, I've taken a few weeks off just to get a break because I felt the pressure of making a video every week was getting to be too much. But now I'm back and I've got some fun projects coming up. So this one is no exception. Let's jump right in. I recently became interested in the trammel of Archimedes, otherwise known as a fidget toy or a do-nothing toy. And yes, we're talking about that Archimedes. And the point of it is, is to draw an oval, I'm sorry, not an oval, an ellipse, uh, with a ratio of 1 by 2. So in my research, I found this guy on Etsy who makes 3D printed trammels, 2-axis, 3-axis, and 4-axis. And I thought, well, I'll just buy one and use that as a model to make my own. So here's the 4-axis one that I purchased, and it's beautiful. It's really well made, very affordable, and it works perfectly. So I thought, okay, let me think about making one similar to this. And look at the way those little uh, trammel bars miss each other in the corners. That is just fascinating to me. The whole the way this thing works is... I became a little obsessed, let's say that. Uh, so there it is, the original design. I'm cutting out a circle here out of half-inch clear acrylic. Now, uh, you notice the way the chips are flying there. This is cast acrylic. If you ever work with acrylic, do not ever get extruded acrylic. It'll just gum up the moment the tool gets hot. So I'm going to drill a hole in the center here, and the point of that is to get it mounted up onto my woodworking lathe so I can just true it up and clean it up and polish the edges. So I'm using a uh, special plastic drill bit that has a different taper there. Notice that. Uh, that means it won't grab when it goes through the bottom of the cut. So now I'm going to bolt it onto a uh, quarter by 20 uh, thread extender, otherwise known as a pump rod connector, I believe. Putting that into my woodworking lathe. Uh, that's got to go into the chuck there, and i just got to loosen it up. Drop it in there, tighten that down. And then tighten it down with the Allen wrench here. Okay, so now I'm ready to spin it up, and I'm going to use my woodworking carbide insert tool with a round end, which makes a really nice finish on acrylic here. You can see it's a little bumpy and rough, and then now I've got it down far enough that I can see how much further I've got to go. Once I've got it smooth with the cutter, uh, then I go in with 440 emery paper and then finally fine Scotch-Brite, and that brings it down to a shiny polished finish. It's very satisfying, very easy to do when it's spinning like this. So now I'm using this new dual gauge tramming tool that I just got from Little Machine Shop on sale. It's really helpful and I'm using it to level out my uh, drill press table here, just tapping it into place. I'm not going to do it because I've got it pretty darn close. But you can see how helpful this tool is. It's well worth the investment. So now I've mounted my rotary table onto the drill press table. As you can see here, I'm bolting it down with some extended bolts and pump rod connectors again, one of my favorite little adapter tools, and washers on the bottom, all that. So now it's mounted there, and what I'm going to do is drill holes straight down in to the center, carefully aligning my drill bit to the center of the disc. So now I'm going to use a 5 16 inch drill bit and drill to the center using lots of WD-40 so that it makes a nice, clean, shiny, finished cut and also relieving the chips out of there often so they don't mung up inside of there. Once again, it's essential to use cast acrylic for this kind of a project. Um, extruded would just gum up and make an absolute mess. So now I'm exploring turning it to 45 degrees, but mostly I'm just moving it over uh, so I can get the 5 16 brass rod that I wanted to put in there and just see how it fits. Uh, I've jumped ahead of myself a little bit there, thinking I was going to drill the next hole at 45 degrees, and I'm not. But look, that works beautifully. That's what I wanted. So now I thought I'd just go straight in from the other side, assuming that I've got the whole uh, disc centered perfectly under the drill. But as you can see already, I'm a little bit off. So these two uh, holes are staggered, and that's just not going to work. So what is plan B here? Um, let's see. If I drill it out to a 3 8 inch, 
drill, then I have a longer drill bit that would go all the way through. So I'm going to go in with the short drill here, as you can see. And then if I take it off and use my cordless drill with the 3 8 inch drill bit, I think I can just blow all the way through and make an, a through hole that is perfectly true. So let's see how this works out here. And yeah, it's going to grab there, and that's not working too well, but I'm going to back out and try again, and now it should just align into that other existing hole, but yeah, it's kind of, oh, look at that, it grabbed, it's chewing up, it's made a mess of the hole, but what the heck, I'm going to keep going. Maybe this is a valuable lesson to learn here, but that hole looks really ugly. So then I tried drilling a new hole at 45 degrees, because they all need to be at 45 degrees to each other. Let's see if I can just go all the way through and make a nicer hole this way. Putting lots of WD in there. And yeah, that's breaking in there just fine. Getting a good start. Yeah, okay, this, this has seemed like a plan there. Just broke through. That yeah, doesn't look too bad. Okay, let's try that drill bit in there and see if it's going to work out. Wow, look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay, we have a plan. So that was a worthwhile experiment, except that our, this is the entry side here, and this is the exit side, and it drifted off. Now, that's because I was hand-holding the cordless drill. So I'm going to jig up again and do this on the drill press all over again. So I need to make a new disc, and as you can see, I'm just getting that all screwed up, and look at those streamers come off there. Isn't that fun? Here's my 440 uh, sandpaper, emery paper. Get rid of all the little tooling marks, and then just a little Scotch-Brite will bring it down to a really nice shine. Look at that edge. That's a polished edge. So mounting this up to my rotary table, and I'm going to drill halfway through for all four holes, and then pick it up again and drill through all the way with my longer drill bit. So here I am moving over to 45 degrees. And I know parallax makes it look like I'm missing the mark when I go past it and come back, but it, that is exactly 45 looking straight down on the top. So now I'm jigging it back up again on an angle plate, and what I have to do is crank the table up because I've slid it onto the drill bit, and then that will allow me to go all the way through with the uh, travel that I have on the drill press. So I locked it down, then I realized, no, I need to bump it over a little bit to get it really snugged up against there. It's, I've got movement there, but it's not quite tight enough to the angle plate. Tighten it up a little bit more, that's nice and snug. So then I can clamp that down, lock down the drill press, and put a clamp on it. So this now allows me to complete the hole, keeping it true, so it doesn't wander off as I did in my first try there. Here we go. And excuse the wobbling camera here, I didn't have it mounted well. I'm shooting um, WD right into that center hole so it can lubricate the drill. And there we are, just broke through. Now you notice all the chips are working their way out through all the other holes, which is kind of annoying. So that's one complete cross hole completed. And now I'm gonna take some air and try and blow all those chips out so they don't mung up the drill as I go further. Uh, through the other ones. Um, it's better to keep the chips all the way out of there just so that they don't get in the way. So here we go with my wiggly jumping camera movement there and that's my final hole. They all look pretty good. Some of, them, some of them are just not quite perfect but I can live with that. So now I'm over to the milling machine and I'm getting it centered up on this side. I'm using a 1 8 inch milling cutter with a 2 flute for acrylic soft materials. And I went back and forth, left and right, to get it centered by eye, basically. And again, using a lot of WD-40 to make that cut a nice, clean finish. I'm using pretty high RPM, probably 1500 to 2000 RPM with that cutter, which is what they're best for with acrylic. And that seems to be working out just fine. You can see it looks really nice and centered, and that's a 440 bolt, which is what I'm planning to put in there to screw that into the trammel bars, which will be made of uh, brass stock, as you can see here. Now, obviously, the brass rod is a bit snug here, so I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to do about that. I think the best thing to do is to turn them down a bit on the lathe. Just take a few thou off on the, the metal lathe. 
and I need to figure out how long they are. So uh, I'm going to copy what he did before, which is 1.4 inches roughly, and mark that length on the lathe using my caliper very carefully so I don't bump into the collet. Draw chuck. There we are. So now I'm going to start a little bit of a parting maneuver there so I can know where the end of that bar is. And then set up with my favorite round nose uh, cutter and just clean it up. I'm taking about two or three thousandths off, just enough so that it will glide through the hole. I'm doing a spring pass now and that should do it. Let's check and see how it's going to fit in that hole. So let's see if it fits well. Yes, it does. Slides on beautifully. The 3D printed uh, model that I bought had some slop in it, and I think that helps it work really well. So some 400 uh, emery paper again, and a little Scotch-Brite. Just shine it up a little bit, and it'll look nice. And also, of course, I don't want any ridges that would bind up as it slides through the holes. So the next step then is just to file off uh, a rounded end there to also help it guide through the center section of the whole trammel thing. It has to cross over all those other holes there. So cleaning that up with Scotch-Brite again, just making everything shiny. And parting it off. I put my Scotch-Brite pad down there to catch it and then I thought, no, I'll just grab it with my hand. There she goes. So now I've got two of them side by side in my milling vise and I'm using a spotting drill to find the center for the hole that I'm going to drill in there and then tap. So I've already drilled a uh, tap drill for 440 and I'm going to thread it with 440. I'm only going part way through and I'm now checking it with a bolt. That's a 440 cap head screw. So now I've drawn out the handle that I want to make and I'm drilling the holes based on a pattern that I drew with a compass and lines and I should have used the circle finding uh, system on my DRO because that would have been more accurate. In retrospect, I think I'll go ahead and make another one of these later after this video, but they were a little bit off. So now the big hole where I'm going to put my finger, I'm going to start with the quarter inch plastic drilling bit like you saw earlier that has a uh, a longer point on it so it doesn't bust through on the bottom of the acrylic. And then my favorite step drill. I've had this one for over 40 years when Irwin first introduced them, I believe. So I'm going to go all the way down there and then flip it over and do from the other side. That's a fun tool to use. So now I'm going to cut this all out. And again, you notice the chips are flying as little particles, which have a lot of static on them, too, with acrylic. Um, but again, don't buy extruded acrylic. It is gummy. It's cheaper, but it's a mistake to try and use it. This cast stuff works beautifully. It works like aluminum, almost. So I've got that all cut out. And please remember to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell. And you can also support me on Patreon. Uh, I could appreciate the support. I'm trying to grow the channel a little bit. So here we are. I've got it all cut out. And I'm just going to use some very fine sandpaper. I think this is 220 on my big wide belt sander. I'm going to go around and sand it down to the line. This is my common practice for making circles and cutouts on acrylic. And then I'll also tip it up on edge a little bit and just kind of get the grain of the sanding pattern to follow those surfaces. So then I rubbed it down with uh, 440 or 400 paper and then Scotch-Brite. And here's your ASMR moment of uh, peeling that paper off, which is oddly satisfying. Uh, as paper, uh, as acrylic sits around with the paper on it for too long, that paper doesn't come off very easily. Uh, but in this case, it's relatively fresh and came off nicely. I found that uh, old paper will come off if you soak it in WD-40, where the paper just won't come off easily. You spray it on, let it set for a while, and it will loosen it up. So here we go. I'm going to start putting my little brass trammel sliders. I don't know what the proper term is for them in there. And just finger tighten them to start with and see how it all feels. Some of them were a little bit slightly different dimensions, so some of them were a little sticky in some of the channels, so I deliberately selected different bars to fit different holes. And that, that worked out well once I learned which ones fit better. 
So I've got the fourth one in there, and oh, look at that. Yeah, it's a little bit sticky. Got a little refinement to do. Like I said, I'll probably make another handle. But it works. Yeah, I mean, the, the 3D printed one was beautiful and works really well. But this is, this is doing exactly what I wanted it to do, and it's just so cool. It's almost like it's made out of transparent aluminum.